I'm excited to welcome you to the absolute best video on methods for including JavaScript you'll find anywhere on YouTube. In this video, I cover everything you need to know in detail and use interactive animations, beautiful illustrations, and professional editing to ensure you remain engaged in order to maximize your learning. So let's jump in. So the first thing we need to get our head around is that JavaScript loads through HTML. JavaScript loads through HTML as HTML is the foundation of a web page and JavaScript's aim is to modify HTML content. This is just like how CSS exists to style HTML. So in order to load an HTML file in the browser or a CSS file, it has to be anchored inside an HTML file because the browser is always expecting to first load content through HTML. Visually, it looks like this. We have our Wordle web page. And initially, HTML will load into the web page. The HTML file is then connected to a CSS file as well as a JavaScript file. Now, the reason I wanted to highlight this is that because JavaScript is a programming language inside the browser, this is slightly different to a lot of other programming languages where they just load inside their environment. It's not like you need to connect them to another kind of programming language like HTML. So JavaScript's a bit unique in that in order to run it, we always have to anchor it to an HTML file because the browser is always expecting to initially load an HTML file. So let's take a look at the different methods for including JavaScript. There are three ways for including JavaScript in HTML. The first method is inline JavaScript. The second method is internal JavaScript. And the third method is external JavaScript. Inline and internal JavaScript are not recommended. I will see why soon and external JavaScript is best practice. Now, just to highlight, these methods of inline, internal, and external are the exact same as CSS. So let's take a look at inline JavaScript first. This is when JavaScript is written directly in individual HTML elements. It looks something like this. We have a button with the text click me, and inside the button, we add an attribute like on click with this piece of JavaScript. I don't want you to worry at all about any of the syntax for the rest of this video. All I want you walking away with is how JavaScript is included through these different methods. So we call this inline. It's in line with the actual HTML element. Now this method is not good because the code has to be duplicated for each element. Let's play around with this inside VS Code. Now throughout my JavaScript full course, I'm using VS Code as my text editor, which you can download from code.visualstudio.com and Google Chrome as my web browser which you can download from google.com forward slash Chrome. Now, if you wanna know more about what a text editor is and how a web browser works, you can check out my video in the description below. All right, in my desktop, I'm gonna create a new folder called including JavaScript. Inside VS Code, I'm gonna click open. I'm gonna to go to my desktop and open this directory. I'm gonna hit Command N on my Mac to create a new file. I'm immediately gonna save it by hitting Command S. And I'm just going to call it index.html. So the first thing I want to do is grab the HTML boilerplate by hitting exclamation mark enter. If you don't know anything about HTML boilerplate, you can check out my video in the description below. Okay, so in our body, let's go just add a button. I'll add the text click me. I'm then going to grab the on click HTML attribute and set its value to alert, open brackets, single quotation marks, hello world. Now, once again, I don't want you to worry at all about any of this syntax. We're gonna be looking at all of this a bit later in the course. All I want you to understand is that this JavaScript is written in line. And just to check out what this does, if I open up this HTML file in the browser, you can see I have a button over here. And if I click it, I get this alert saying, hello world. So JavaScript is being loaded into this web page through an inline HTML attribute. So the next method for including JavaScript is internal JavaScript. This is JavaScript written in a single HTML document using the script element. So this is not using an attribute, but an actual element. It looks like this. We have the same button like we had before, and we give it an ID with the value button. We then introduce script tags, and then inside the script tags, we can write some JavaScript, which targets this button and gives us the same alert we saw earlier. Now this piece of code looks very overwhelming. And again, I don't want you to worry at all about it. I just want you to understand that this JavaScript is written internally. That is inside its own script tags in the HTML document. This method is also not good because code has to be duplicated for each HTML page. 
As you can imagine, in a large-scale application, we could have hundreds or thousands of HTML pages. And we may want similar logic applied on some of those pages. Using this method, we'd have to duplicate the script tags across multiple pages. So let's go play around with this inside VS Code. All right, so picking up where we left off, I'm now gonna remove this attribute. I'm gonna replace it with an ID attribute and give it the value btn for button. I'm then gonna add some script tags and I'm gonna paste in some JavaScript code sitting in my clipboard. Now just a note, it's best practice to add our script tags just before our closing body tag. And that's because we always want our HTML content inside the body to load on the page first and then for JavaScript to execute last. All right, so I'm gonna click the button and we have the same alert as before, hello world. Except now our JavaScript is written internally, that is inside script tags. Now the one improvement with using internal JavaScript like this is that this code can be used throughout this document and is not tied to a specific HTML element. So the final method we can include JavaScript is through external JavaScript. This is when code is in a separate JavaScript file and is linked to the HTML documents. It looks like this. We have our index.html file, which has a button. We then add the same script tags we saw earlier, but this time inside the script tags, we're adding a source attribute. The value of this source attribute, script.js, is referencing a JavaScript file through a relative URL path. And inside the script.js file, we have our code. Now, if you don't know anything about relative URL paths, you can check out my video in the description below. Now, the benefit with this method is that our JavaScript is centrally managed in a single file, which means that we can easily link it to other HTML pages. For example, we could use the same script tags on another page like register.html. So this is our preferred method. Code is centrally managed from one file. So let's go play around with this inside VS Code. All right, so I'm back where I left off. I'm now gonna come into our directory over here and add a new file called script.js. You can name this whatever you want. I'm just calling it script. Inside index.html, I'm gonna cut this code and position our script tags like this. I'm just gonna paste this code into script.js. Inside index.html, in order to link our script.js inside the script opening tag, I'm gonna grab the source attribute and set the value to the name of the JavaScript file, which is script.js. Now, because script.js is on the same level inside our current working directory, we just reference it like this. All right, let's go test this in the browser. If I click the button, we get our same alert, hello world. Now our JavaScript is centrally managed, which means that we can add this to any HTML page through the script tags. So for example, if I come and create a new file called register.html, and I simply copy all this code and paste it in here, just to make it a bit different, let's add an h1 and call it register. And on index.html, let's just call this home. I'm also just gonna add an anchor tag so we can easily link to our register page. I'll grab register.html as the href attributes and give it the text register. Now on our register page, because we're referencing the same script.js, we're able to apply this same logic onto our button. So let's go test this out. I'll refresh. On our homepage, we still have hello world. If I go to register now, which has now navigated me to the register page, and I can confirm this in my address bar, register.html, if I click me, I get the same alert. So this code is now accessible on any HTML page through our script tags with the source attribute. And our JavaScript is centrally managed. Now, before we finish up, I just wanna go into a little bit more detail about how a web page loads. A web page loads through a series of steps involving rendering HTML and CSS and then updating the page with JavaScript. All right, so I'm back on my favorite Wordle game. The page loads. I then come and give a guess. I'm gonna guess Madagascar. I then enter my guess and the web page updates. Specifically, my guess has been added along with the distance to the correct country direction and percentage correct. So let's break down what's happening behind the scenes. So our web page initially loads. The first step is the user submits a guess, like Egypt. The second step is that this guess is sent to the Wordle server, which is responsible for applying logic to see how my guess compares to the correct country. Once the server calculates this, the server sends a response back to the browser. The response is a package of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, where we know the HTML file is linked to a CSS file as well as a JavaScript file. 
The fourth step is the HTML file is sent to the render engine. The render engine is a part of the browser responsible for rendering the web page content, that is, the HTML and CSS. So step number five is the web page content and styles are rendered. Now at this point, there's actually been no change to the page because no JavaScript has been executed inside the browser. This all happens so fast, you don't even see it. But if you were to break this down into nanoseconds, the initial response would actually have no change to what was already there. What then happens is that the JavaScript file is sent to the JavaScript engine. This again is built into the browser. The JavaScript engine executes the JavaScript code, which we know is responsible for modifying the web page content, that is displaying my guess, as well as how far I was from the correct country, its direction and percent correct. The JavaScript engine then provides instructions to the render engine where the HTML and CSS is updated in order to modify the web page's content to show the results of my guess. And the final step is that the web page is updated. The render engine renders the final web page in the browser. So our page changes from this to this, where we now have my guess and its result. So I just wanted you to walk away with a little bit more detail about what's happening behind the scenes. It's a fairly interesting process, where initially the first render of the page will actually update no new content. It's only on the second render when the JavaScript file is executed and instructs the render engine how to update the content on the page do we see the change. Now, as I mentioned, this all happens so fast, you don't even see the initial page render where there aren't any changes. All right, let's wrap up by building a summary card, including JavaScript. We looked at three different methods for including JavaScript. There were inline JavaScript, which looked like this, where we used a source attribute inside an HTML tag, and this was not a good option because JavaScript needs to be duplicated for each HTML element. We then looked at internal JavaScript, where we introduced a script tag in the HTML document. This also wasn't good because it means JavaScript logic needs to be duplicated across multiple HTML pages. The final method was external JavaScript. This is when we had an index.html page, where we had our script tags and had a source attribute, which referenced the JavaScript file script.js. This script.js contained our JavaScript code and centrally managing it like this means that on any HTML page, we can simply reference the script.js file. This method is good because our JavaScript is now centrally managed. Now in the previous video in this series on how JavaScript works, I ended the video with this diagram, but now we have a much better understanding of how a web page actually loads. So let's go and update this. We have our web page. The user submits a guess. The guess is sent to the server. The server calculates how my guess compares to the target country. The server then responds with a package of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. The HTML file is linked to the CSS file and JavaScript file. The HTML is sent to the render engine inside the browser. The web page is rendered. That is, the HTML and CSS is rendered into UI I see on the page. And at this point, there actually hasn't been any change on the web page. The JavaScript file is then sent to the JavaScript engine which is also inside the browser. The JavaScript engine executes the JavaScript file so that the HTML and CSS is updated. And then the render engine sends the updated HTML and CSS to the browser UI, where the web page is updated. And this results in our web page updating to this, where my guess is shown, as well as how it compares to the target country. If you've enjoyed this style of teaching and are looking at mastering JavaScript, you can join me in my JavaScript full course, which is available for free on my channel. The course is designed for complete beginners and covers everything you need to know to code JavaScript at a professional level. In the course, you'll experience the same high quality teaching and build a whole range of real life projects from scratch. Join me today and also make sure to subscribe to the channel to stay in the loop with new releases. See you in the JavaScript full course.